On day one of the new parliament in December, we will start getting our new deal through. Boris Johnson's Tories are driving the country towards a no deal cliff edge. You stay categorical. You are fake news. Hi, I'm Mark Wells, Associate Professor of Broadcast and Multimedia Journalism and also Course Director for the Journalism Degrees here at UEA. I trained as a reporter originally with Eastern Counties Newspapers, now Archant, and then went to the BBC Television working to be a news editor, producing and sometimes directing news programmes. I became an independent producer, mostly of children's programmes, and then a studio manager before coming to UEA. So I've worked as a reporter and a director here and in the Middle East and of course my first love, producing programmes for broadcast television. Hi, I'm Claire Preecy. I'm a journalism lecturer at the University of East Anglia. I specialise in radio because that's my background. I used to be a producer, a presenter and a reporter for BBC National Radio. I worked for Newsbeat on Radio 1. I've also been on Five Live and I've done pieces for Radio 2 and Radio 4 as well. I've worked in local television too, presenting a politics programme. And now I teach at the University of East Anglia and I also have a podcast called Politics at the Edge. Journalism has changed an awful lot over the last 20 years or so. The internet and social media have played a crucial role in that. Before news organisations had access to information, they decided what was important and they chose what to share with us as audiences. Now, of course, audiences, they have access to the information and we're bombarded with it through our social media channels every single day. And so journalism has had to change. And those traditional skills of researching, interviewing and presenting, they're still really important and we teach those. But also most journalists today are now expected to be multi-skilled. So that means being able to operate a camera, being able to record and edit your own video, your own audio and sometimes direct programmes as well. Over the last few years, we've also seen a rise in misinformation and disinformation. And now journalists also need to learn how to be fact checkers and how to operate in a responsible way on social media. Our aim is to prepare you for the world of professional journalism. So we teach you how to conduct journalistic research with the appropriate critical thinking you need to develop your own stories. You'll get plenty of opportunity to practice interviewing people for radio and TV, as well as written articles. We'll show you how stories can be found in the data circulating around us on the internet. And we'll make sure you understand how government, politics and law actually work in this country. The very nature of broadcast journalism means having a clear understanding of how to communicate your story effectively using pictures. So we take the time to show you how to use your camera to set up and record the stories, as well as using audio and video to make an effective edit to communicate the story to your audience. We'll also show you how to use your voice effectively as a presenter, as well as looking at social media and how the role of the journalist has changed and how this affects the edit. We'll also be looking at using content management systems to create and populate websites to present your material to different audiences. Millions of people still get their news from broadcast television, so we'll make sure you learn how to make professional broadcast television news packages. This is Victoria. A video she did with us on the Norwich Gaming Festival helped her land a job as a video journalist. For her final project with us, she went home to Alicante in Spain to report on how the British expats there were responding to Brexit. Over the years, there's hardly a topic our student journalists haven't covered. Here's some of their work. Do you find yourself, as I often do, in an antique shop and really fancy a pint? Well, bizarrely enough, there's a place in Norwich where you can do just that. This unassuming shop front on St. Benedict Street is actually the home to Arboretum, a venue that combines its owner's love for Victorian curiosities with their experience in the hospitality trade. Hello, I'm 
Francis Butler and welcome to Norfolk Newsline. I'm Han Singh. My name is Karina Yang. You are watching Norfolk Newsline brought to you from the Epic Studios in Norwich. Over the next year, 10 statues all over Norwich can now talk. Hello, good of you to stop by. Hi Melbourne, how do you Hello. do? Hello, yeah, Hello Katrina. Hi. Hello, so here is your boat. This is my vessel, yes. There are charities, workplaces and businesses all jumping on board to be part of this unique journey of Lego learning. If they find a block that isn't their colour, they are encouraged to use their communication and sharing skills to help their classmates. For Jane, it's more than a job, it's a way of life. I needed something to keep me busy. I loved going to see them in fields and I thought, if I love them this much, I don't want to support the industry that kills them. After finishing 8th last year, Norwich are now favourites for automatic promotion. The whole team was working really well, um, the players were not playing so much. 20% of women and 4% of men have experienced some type of sexual assault. You should have respect for women. And as you can see, the law enforcement agencies have placed containers to prevent people from going out and receiving their former prime minister. Good. British wrestling is once again back on TV. I'll be training to become a wrestler for six weeks. You're gonna fail it. Whatever it is, it's a hundred percent real. I get spat on regularly. I get um, rubbish chucked at me regularly. I get stones chucked at me regularly. And it's gotten to a point. It's just like I really don't care anymore. The question I asked was, if I was a young Muslim mum, would I come to a church hall at five o'clock on a Friday to put my view forward as to what an issue in my community was? I wouldn't. This is King's Pub, just off Prince of Wales Road. Last December it was the scene of a violent attack. The pub owners were left scratched and bruised and fearing for their safety. The Forum where the Norwich Gaming Festival will start this Sunday, 29th of May. How would you attract girls into the game developing industry? One of the biggest problems, I think, is making people aware of the reality of what we do. They've erected a VR playground. I decided to give it a go just to see what it is about. And with the wind behind me, it does feel I'm basically like flying. <laughs> Roadworks and road closures have become a familiar sight at the busy Five Ways roundabout in Norwich and hopefully upon completion the roundabout will be a much safer place for local cyclists. Ben Hinton, Norfolk Newsline, Five Ways. That's all we've got time for on Norfolk Newsline tonight. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. As well as video production skills, you'll also learn how to produce compelling and interesting radio. Radio is a really important skill to have. 89% of people in the UK listen to radio every single week. It's also a really good route into the industry. So even if you think you'd like to end up in television or somewhere else, it's important to have those skills. And with podcasting becoming really important, all of those skills are completely transferable as well. One of the things we like you to do is wherever possible, get out and about and talk to real people about the issues affecting their lives. So here some of our students are doing that. We can see first at the County Council, interviewing people about cuts to services. Secondly, interviewing the manager of Norwich Market. And thirdly, interviewing interviewing the former Norwich North MP Ian Gibson. In radio production you have to take on a number of different roles and you have to be able to do all of them. Ben here is reading the news, doing the bulletin and behind him is Sophie. She's acting as his producer on the bulletin that day. The clips you're about to hear come from reports that our students have done looking at various problems including whether students should get free school meals, what should we do about the problem of litter on beaches, how do we recycle food effectively? And finally, about the issue of homelessness. Good afternoon, this is your four o'clock news. I'm Ben Hinton. I'm here at Redland Primary School in Chippenham to find out whether teachers, parents and pupils think Jeremy Corbyn's pledge of free school meals for all primary school children is a good idea. As head teacher, it's already a struggle trying not to make a loss with the current system where children from four to seven get free school meals and children above that age have to pay. I think you should have school dinners because my mum won't have to make food every day. It's a cold and windy December day on the Great Yarmouth seafront. 
beachgoers are hard to come by at this time of year, but across the UK, seaside towns like this are seeing a rise in litter. It's disappointing. I mean, Great Yarmouth Borough Council spend an awful lot of money on beach cleaning, tens and tens and tens of thousands of pounds. You know, we provide a lot of litter bins, but unfortunately some people just don't bother and just sling it on the beach. Food Cycle is working to fight both commercial food waste and help out those who might need a good hot meal. And it all starts on a bike. My route is Sainsbury's and M&S and the market. What we've just picked up here, potatoes and various fruit. This is about average, it's going to fill our trailer and it looks like pretty decent things that will be good for the cooking team. I also met Ben, who has been living on the street since he was 17. I was homeless on the street for ages, but I've become a heroin addict before then. But they stopped my methadone. So then like, I needed something to stabilise myself, so I, I turned to alcohol. And I was drinking sometimes like 20 tins of K-cider a day. But to get an appointment here, to turn around and get an alcohol detox, takes you like three weeks, which is it's pathetic. Man. It should be, if you want to better yourself, then why, why is the support not there? You can see and listen to more of our students' work on the ueajournalism.com website. We believe the way to learn journalism is to get out and do it. So from the very start, you'll be working as a news gatherer and as a news producer. We teach through lectures, workshops and discussion. Alongside your journalistic competence, you'll be developing technical skills, either through working in teams or alone. You'll learn from experience and from reviewing what you have done with us. So your first year at uni, it's always going to be really interesting. You're adapting to life away from home. You're settling into life at university, settling into more independent study as well. We'll be introducing you to your degree programme, um, getting to understand what's expected of you. And you'll also um, learn important study skills. The modules that we'll study in the first year are Introduction to Journalism, so that gives you a basic grounding in life as a reporter, how to research stories, how to find stories and how to write stories. You'll also do a module called Audiovisual Skills. Now, people come to university with varying different skills. Some people are very technically able, some people need a bit more support. So this module is really there to help you learn how to use cameras effectively, how to edit audio and video, um, and, and will bring you up to speed so that everybody's operating at a skill level that is going to be useful for them. The module broadcasting, that's got some theory in it, but also some practice. So you'll be learning about the background of the industry and you'll also be making a project alongside your colleagues. Law on the journalist is really important. All journalists need to know how to operate within the law. So we give you an introduction in the first year so you can get cracking straight away. The Contemporary Politics module gives you really useful background information about how the world works and helps you understand the context that's going to help you translate those stories for an audience. In your second year, you look at journalistic practice in more detail. That includes the different forms and types of legislation and regulation which apply to journalists working in different sectors of the industry. You'll spend a lot of time producing news programmes with your fellow students. Practice, as they say, makes perfect. And you'll develop a deeper understanding of politics and particularly media law. This is the stuff that any future employer will really expect you to know. So in the third year, you're going to be working more independently and preparing yourself for your career. The core modules are the journalism placement. Now, hopefully that will have taken place over the summer holidays between the second and third year. But it might be that you need to put in a few extra days during the third year. But you'll write a report about your journalism placement and tell us what you've learned during that process. Newsroom practice too is where you'll get an opportunity to do another 15 news days, again to really cement what you've learned in the first two years and make sure that you're ready to go into the workplace. 
The Extended Journalism Project is an opportunity for you to make a documentary in radio or in video about a, an issue that really matters to you, something that you really care about. Um, and that's a, a fantastic opportunity which we offer in the third year instead of a dissertation. There'll be optional modules, including political journalism, if you're interested in focusing on a career in politics and journalism, or independent factual production. And that's in case you're thinking about setting up your own company as an independent producer. Who makes a good journalist? Well, you'll need to prove your basic ability by achieving good A-levels or equivalent qualifications. And we'll ask you, one way or another, to provide more information about yourself. Because the really important thing is you. Are you inquisitive? Nosy even? Can you communicate well with other people? Do you follow what is going on in the world around you? And do you believe that access to fair, balanced and accurate reporting helps make our world a better place? If you do, you're the person we're looking for. One of the advantages of studying practical journalism at UEA is that you'll be doing it in a school of politics. So how does that help us? Well, one of the key roles of the journalist is holding power to account and asking important questions to people who are in power on behalf of the audience. So if you're interested in politics and you want to make a difference in the world, this is one way that you could do it. And by learning more about politics and how our political systems work, it will help you to uncover stories and it'll also help you to explain them to an audience in an accessible way. In the past, our MA journalism students have gone on to a variety of jobs, working as journalists or media professionals in the UK or all over the world. Some present the news, others report it for TV, radio or online. Others have gone into journalistic roles in PR or with charities. The world really is your oyster. Sophie Wiggins graduated recently. She was chosen from hundreds of other applicants from all over the country to become one of just a handful of ITV news trainees. This is her story. Hi, I'm Sophie and I studied broadcast journalism at UBA and I'm now a journalism trainee here at ITV Anglia. This job involves writing links and scripts for our programme, it involves producing bulletins such as for the lunchtime news and I also get to set up stories and spend some time with our reporters. I'd say that the course really helped me to prepare for this job because it helped me work to strict deadlines with the news days, it gave me the confidence to meet people in person and talk to people over the phone and the law and politics course gave me those basic tips to be able to set up stories correctly in the newsroom. Five, well, we'll be four, back just after eight three, o'clock right now though. Two, I'm heading back to Bell and Kate. One, See you later. Zero. Remember, by selecting the UEA, you'll be coming to one of the country's top universities, recognised here and abroad as one of the world's leading centres for knowledge, teaching and research. For those of you that aren't able to get here, have a look at this. One of the great things about coming to UEA is where we are. Four miles outside of the city of Norwich, the UEA is built on an edge of a beautiful lake where you can walk around and meet your friends after class. You'll see in the picture we also have a library which is open 24-7 and the Student Union Building, home to many a great night out. The sports park has an Olympic-sized swimming pool and plenty of other facilities, including climbing wall and outdoor sports pitches. We also have an on-site medical centre for students to have access to medical help, but as journalists, a lot of your work will be taking place in the city of Norwich, getting out and about, meeting people, so while you'll be based here for some of your classes, you'll be spending plenty of time in Norwich as well. So of course, like you, we have social media accounts and you can follow us on those social media accounts to find out what we're up to um, and see more graduate stories. We're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. So if you'd like to link up with us, please do so there. And we also sometimes on those platforms post tips for good programmes that you might want to watch or listen to from time to time. And if you've got a burning question, you can drop us a message as well. Finally, you don't need me to tell you the world is changing. We're living through extraordinary times. Politics are in turmoil, assumptions about our health and basic freedoms are being challenged. The survival of the planet is questioned by many. Journalism is changing too and our course will change with it. Nobody knows what the end game will be, but hey, dealing with change is something that storytellers have been doing since the first cave painters and the first printing presses. We think we can help you to make the world a better place. And remember, if you want the right answers, you have to ask the right questions. Thank you.